All right, so to conclude uh, this week's lecture notes, I figured that what we should look at are sort of the, the effects of unions over time, okay? And so uh, with all of these considerations, what has been sort of the overall economic effect of unions? Have they been sort of a force for good, uh, safeguarding the rights of the little guys and gals against the efforts of the man? Or have they been a tool for the enrichment of some at the expense of everyone else? Well, so like all things in economics, the empirical evidence is really mixed, and it depends on who you ask and how they conducted their study. So without going into too much detail, I'll summarize uh, some of the, the basic overarching empirical results here. Now it's important to recognize uh, one very crucial fact, right, and that is uh, that union workers and non-union workers are substitutes. And they may even be perfect substitutes. In fact, there might be literally no difference between uh, a union worker and a non-union worker, right? We can imagine, we can certainly imagine uh, that being true, okay? So let's just suppose uh, that we have two labor markets uh, that are identical in every way uh, and not, neither one is unionized. We'll call this A and we'll call this B. Okay, cool. We've got all kinds of good stuff going on here. Great, all right? And let's also suppose uh, that it is costless for workers to move between A and B. Okay, so there's there's nothing uh, nothing stopping a worker from this market from going into this market and a worker from this market from going into this market. Right? There's nothing in the way of that happening whatsoever. And so what we should expect to see uh, are the wages. The initial wages, we'll call them W0, all right, being equal across the industry, right? Everyone should be paid basically the same, right? If everything about these two labor markets is exactly the same and it's costless to move between the two, right, everybody should be paid the same in both markets. And so we'll call this Q0B, and this is Q0A, which just indicates, you know, W0 is the initial wage. This is the initial quantity of labor uh, purchased and supplied in industry A or in labor market A. And this is the initial quantity uh, for industry or labor market B. Okay? Now, let's suppose... Uh, that this section or this this labor market uh, successfully unionizes and secures higher wages we'll call them uh, W1 right we'll call them W1 uh, here okay for their workers okay and so at W1 right this many workers Q1A right Q1A workers will actually be looking, will actually get employed, uh, but a Q 2A workers will be looking for work, right? This is the standard same exact analysis as the minimum wage, right? But the difference here is that these workers, so Q2A minus Q1A will never find work in A, right? They're never going to find work. As long as the union's there, they will never ever find work. And so what we end up seeing happen is actually uh, these workers leave and come over here. Well, so those workers leaving actually end up reducing the supply of labor over here, okay, and increasing the supply of labor over here, 
and decreasing the wages. Right? And so what ends up happening is because workers in A unionized and got their, their higher salaries, they actually might have ended up pushing down the wages of workers in, uh, in employment or labor market B, right? And so this might make it seem like what we need to do is have the workers in market B unionize, but then there would just be a third sector where we would see not only these workers go, but also Q2B minus Q2, Q1B, right, the analogous over here, those workers would also go. And so in, in what we could call, you know, labor market C, if I were to draw it, we'd see an even bigger increase in the supply of labor and a further decrease in the wages of those workers, okay? And so what we end up seeing is a labor market or a, the presence of a union actually uh, end up causing workers in other labor markets to earn fewer dollars, right? And notice an interesting question, which maybe I'll ask on the exam, uh, is what was the effect, or what is the effect of union in market A on the unemployment rate. Okay, so assume that this is everything in the world, right? There's nothing else here, okay? There's nothing else here whatsoever, and that all these things happen, that the supply curve for labor shifts until it gets to an equilibrium here, and the supply curve for labor in B uh, increases until it gets to an equilibrium there. And so the question is, what is the ultimate effect of unions in market A on the unemployment rate for uh, for both A and B? For both A and B. Okay, so we got to ask that question. Now, uh, if we look at uh, so another possible effect. So let's let's we'll start there. So this is this is it. That's where that question is asking. It's asking about this. Okay. Now another possible effect is that the non-union workers in B, seeing the spillover effects of A becoming unionizing and resulting in lower wages that they receive, they may also want to unionize. And as a result, uh, what's going to happen if B unionizes? So this is if B unionizes. And let's pretend there is no sector C, right? Well then, what we're going to see them do, right, is they're going to have their original supply and demand, right, their new supply, right? And what they're going to do is they're going to raise their wages, right, up a little bit higher than they used to be. and thereby create some unemployment, All right? Excuse me. Or QS minus QD equals the number of unemployed people. All right? <clears throat> and so, and QS equal to the labor force. Right, so QS minus QD all over QS is equal to the unemployment rate. Okay, so uh, if B unionizes, right, you can see that there's going to be some unemployment. Uh, but what happens if B doesn't unionize? Is there any unemployment? And so I, you're going to have to. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see your answer to this question. Uh, yeah, I want to see it. So I'm not gonna. We're not gonna talk about it anymore. Okay. Uh, but those are. That's the week twelve notes. Uh, next week uh, we're talking. I forget what we're talking about. What are we talking about next week? Let's find out.
we are talking about doo -doo -doo. Uh, we'll be talking about oh immigration so next week is immigration uh, it's a short week going to Thanksgiving uh, so hopefully you can get that through uh, you guys will have a quiz I'll announce I'll post it uh, tomorrow uh, to blackboard and you'll have until Sunday uh, at midnight to complete it. As always, feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, feelings, or if you just want to talk about this stuff. Uh, yesterday someone came in uh, from this class, came in and, and chatted with me, and I think we had a great time. So uh, come on in, talk with me. You guys are pretty smart, so uh, come in and chat. We'll have, we'll have some fun. We'll both learn some stuff from, from each other. All right, have a wonderful night. I will talk to you guys soon.